from David from from Bissizan in Sydney here in Germany. Uh, having some quite quite a sunny day, uh, so it's, it's good to talk about future. If the future is as as sunny as uh, as it is today, uh, well, that would be would be great. But there are different, uh, not may, maybe not just positive uh, expectations about uh, how Gen AI will will impact uh, the discipline of enterprise architecture or uh, our living in general. But we're going to focus on enterprise architecture, obviously. When it comes to the future of enterprise architecture, what is the um, the theme of the event today, I think Gen, Gen AI is going to be one of the most important parts. And therefore, we will talk about the um, AI journey, how it's going to transform our way of working, our, our way of uh, talking and collaborating with, with each other. And then I would like to highlight what will, what will change. Uh, so what is the um, what is the future going to look like? What will uh, AI change for, for ourselves? People coming to us with expectations will be different, but also you as architects, you will have different expectations towards us as a tool vendors. Uh, and then at the third point, I'd like to discuss a bit about how you can navigate through that uh, new AI era, I'm going to call it like that. But uh, we could spend hours talking about that, of course. First of all, uh, let me just have a few words about Biz Design. If you haven't heard about us, uh, we are leaders in enterprise architecture, magic, uh, magic quarter was in Gardner for eight years running. Uh, we are working with the with real experts. We are seen as a leader in, in thought leadership. Uh, you see us at the top top ranked in in the parts of the visionaries, and we're trusted by hundreds of satisfied um, customers. And while we do enterprise architecture, we know where when we speak with our customers, what is what is changing. And um, this journey of AI has, well, most people would say has started in November 2022, right? When uh, when JetGPT was being introduced to to public. But even since since then. Um, Things are are changing more and more, the, um, and the most crucial part is uh, how AI is being adopted by the people that use AI within their daily work. So when we when we think back in 2022, I just I just said it. Uh, this is when when this change started to become really popular. You can see enterprise architect has actually been a pretty good uh, pretty good job top ranked best jobs in America 2022. So actually, we don't want this change. Well, it's good as it is, isn't it? <laughs> but actually, there's there's no way to get uh, uh, to get away from it. There's no way to, to hide from it. And therefore, it is necessary to understand how we navigate through this new time. And it's crucial to see what we need to do to get everybody on board, because this journey will feel different for different people. I, I, I always give this example. Uh, in November last year, it was the first birthday of JetGPT, as we know it. And when I think back when my son had his first birthday, he could barely speak, walk, count or anything. If we asked GPT, uh, it is speaking, writing, creating, analyzing, just incredibly good. So we cannot even think about what it will be in the future. And this uncertainty is something that we need to be aware of when we discuss with uh, stakeholders in our organization. There will be people, um, as you can see here on the left side, they see AI as something really positive something good, they want to have the latest features. They are full of enthusiasm about uh, AI coming into their job, into their daily life. They see the opportunities or mainly the chances of it. How it's going to create a balance of technology uh, and intelligence to build up a sustainable uh, future for everyone in, in our work, in our life and so on. But, and that's the truth, we also have a lot of people that are scared by this uh, uncertainty. 
they think AI will take over their jobs. So they're really kind of uh, worrying what, what's going to happen in the next couple, couple of years. And I think that architects need to be aware that both people are within your organization and both people need to be, um, yeah, not to, not to be left behind. So we need the, we need, we need features because people are already, they want to use it. They want to use a Microsoft Copilot. They want to use the latest GPT-4 and everything and because they, they see the potential, how it's got, how it's going to make their, their work easier. But we also need to be aware of what are the threats uh, around that. To find that path in the middle, uh, I think architects are, are requested more, more than ever um, to, to navigate around that uh, uncertain, uncertain time. And as I said, we cannot, we cannot get away from it. Because if you would try to do so, your competitors would do, others would do. And as, uh, as you can see, well, there's, uh, there's a winner takes all race going on. And there's no price for second place. So you need to be, uh, you need to work on speed, focus, and resilience because that are the, the critical capabilities in that transformation of what is what is going on here. We see how uh, the, the big tech companies are working on and having this um, race: who's going to be the best large language model? Who will be the best uh, AI company? Um, what they spend in uh, in millions or billions is just uh, incredible. And because it will decide how uh, how work uh, and how business will be done in, in the future. If we know about this importance, uh, we know that it is a change, but there has always been change. So every uh, every year in the past, there were some changes going on. And enterprise enterprise architecture, uh, needs to work on change just by design. Trans transformation is one of the key aspects uh, as it is for, for enterprise architects. And it's important as with all the other changes and transformation, did you keep on working on, on the core disciplines, which is uh, see the full picture, to know where AI is used, to know what AI is used, who is using it, and then find the right path. What data would you like to provide as training data? What would you see as um, a quick adoption of AI services? What is maybe not as uh, not as relevant could take some some, some years. So, with good data um, and with a good governance around that, we will also talk about ethics and uh, and so on later you can execute with confidence. Even though it is an uncertain time, uh, you need to be working on, uh, on, on execution with, with confidence. And as I said, there will be new expectations coming on. And, and Jenny, I will, will raise the bar of, of expectations on, on, on quality, for example. And I like to compare that uh, to a really popular moment of time um, because it might be something like the iPhone moment. And let me explain why I, why I say that. When you th think back what has changed when the iPhone has been released in terms of how people were expecting to do their job at work has changed dr dramatically. Um, after the iPhone has been released, people would would not be happy if they were told that um, a software deployment is taking, um, or a software request is taking two or three days, because they knew from the from the private usage. Well, I just click here, install, and it's there. No install shield wizard, no requests, no kind of long chain and waiting areas. It was just really quickly going on everything, and this interface uh, and this kind of adaptability for for young people, for old people, it, it didn't, it, it was not relevant anymore how mature you are in working with technology. It made it simple for everyone. And now when you think of how people work with AI or with ChatGPT as an example, it is quite the same, isn't it? 
people are, they want the best quality, like the highest standards. It has never been as good as now if you request something like write me an essay or create me a diagram or just please um, AI give me an analysis of that uh, of that sheet of that spreadsheet or of that PDF report. The quality is just amazing and it's uh, it's increasing over over time from month to month if you compare to three point five to four. But besides quality, also speed is even more important now. So it has never been so quick to create things, to create new things. And that is the expectation that is also coming to you as the architect, but also to us as the tool, tool vendors. And in, in this triangle of quality speed, there's also simplicity. People know it's getting more and more complex. On the other hand, they want it as easy as possible to consume it. And this, in this example here, if you see that, that at Tesla, you just got this uh, steering wheel and you got this um, display, no, nothing else, right? Nothing to distract you, no big menus to go through. Sometimes I need to look on the left, sometimes on the right. No, it's just really simple. And uh, I don't want, I do not want to uh, learn about a tool. I just want to use it, it needs to be simple. Let me have some additional words uh, words on that, especially on like these three topics: quality, speed, and uh, simplicity. A good example of quality is Midjourney. When you think back um, a few years, um, there has already already been Journey AI, but the quality was not really useful. Now in the recent year or months, actually we need to talk about month uh, because of that uh, quick, quick increasing uh, quality. It's getting better and better and same with the quality of, of textual output. And that's the reason why people are requesting higher precision and efficiency. They, they want better, better basis for decision-making, higher quality of your analysis of technical performance and what they what they also expect from from systems and from from tools in place is that it's all robust, it's reliability. So they they expect an increasing um, reliance on digital systems because that's what they experience in their usage with AI. So this kind of long term stability, resilience to failure. Sometimes if it's not right, it's kind of correcting itself, or you just need to give one another phrase and it's going to be better and better. And one important aspect about quality I want to highlight is user centricity. So every user will expect a pretty uh, customized answer or response to what they have requested. Not a one diagram for all uh, anymore. Yeah, they, they, want to, they want to see, okay, I'm a, my, my role is, let's, for example, I'm a CFO. So if I open something, I want all the content being reflected to me um, as I am uh, working as a CFO. Speed is also uh, crazy, right? I just I, I just counted yesterday. It took it 43 seconds to create this capability map. It took 57 seconds to create an essay about the future of enterprise architecture, which is the theme of uh, our session today. And that is. Uh, just giving us an idea of how people want to have a faster development, implementation, real-time data processing. That's what they expect from you, and that's what you expect from our from our side, as as we are the tool vendors. And with the simplicity, uh, as I just as I said earlier, whenever things are getting more and more complex, people want to consume it in a really easy way. Uh, like, uh, explain it to me as I would be a 12-year-old child. So reducing the complexity, but also um, to demystify uh, AI, to, to tell them uh, how AI is working, how AI is building up um, the results that, uh, that, they, that they are working with, that they are um, expecting. Uh, that's uh, that, that's what, they, what they would expect. Um, so we're going to... I'm going to skip the Sora. Maybe you've seen Sora. I think it's just a great example of how simplicity works because you just enter um, one sentence and it's creating uh, a minute of uh, great, great video. So that's a good example of how people 
get get to know about the uh, simplicity a lot. So to summarize that, AI is not only something that's relevant for, for the tech giants, no, everyone needs to be aware of that because every stakeholder in your organization will will be talking about it, will, will request um, this level of quality, speed, and, and simplicity. And uh, for your whole organization, it is um, necessary to, uh, to, to, to adopt it in, in a good way to proceed with a good reference uh, framework with an architecture that takes AI into consideration. And now I would also like to have some words about what you will expect from a tool interaction. So with an, with an EA tool and AI being more and more popular, um, I, I think you will expect more natural language processing as you would know it from, from GPT, like this example here. I'm looking into a capability map, maybe a heat map um, of my uh, maturity gap. And I just want to ask, hey, what does it mean if we have a huge, huge gap within our organization for that capability? And it's creating me some context around it with some additional sources, some additional diagrams I could I could look into. I don't want to learn about that. I just want to read and understand. Or if I see an architecture work here and I just want to understand, okay, now if I want to create a future state on, for this as on the roadmap, where do I start? Right, so this kind of guided architecture approach will be more and more relevant in, in, in the future. And another example from the tool side is that image recognition will be more and more relevant. How often do I see the question in the RFPs, can you import BPMN files? Can you import Visio files? Well, yeah, in the future, even if I have write it on the whiteboard, I would like this to be imported if I just take a photo or if I have a Visio or if I have any other tool, AI supported image recognition should be able uh, to transform that into the diagram language, the modeling language of my tool to create and enrich the repository, but also to standardize diagrams and uh, declarations. And now uh, as, a final, as a final thought, how do we navigate this new era? Um, and I think you, let me just open all of this. Um, I think you already have some good, uh, some good tools with, um, on your hand if you have an uh, EA tool, because you can already put AI in your capability map, in your process framework. You need to see it as something as uh, not, not, not a silo on side of it or something coming on, on, on top of uh, something that, that was never there before. Now it is part of your organization as all the, all, all the other things are. So keep it and monitor this maturity targets, KPIs, but also integrate it into your, this is the number four, integrate it into your application technology architecture uh, as you would do with it, just any other systems. And what's relevant if you adopt AI in your, in your company uh, is that you take care of these three pillars and that is data management. You need to be aware of the data. What is the quality? What's the integrity? So what are you training your AI systems with, your model? Um, what is what, what does data governance look like? What do you need to, uh, um, to optimize over there and to, to align the, the strategy um, with the business, technology, and the data? But on the other side, on the people side, you also uh, have this key challenge to create a um, kind of a, uh, a culture that is that is open for this for this new new technology. And um, last but not least, you need to have this uh, ethical and regulatory compliance topic. This is relevant. You you could have hours talking about that because, as as we see with the uh, AI Act for within the EU or within UK or within the US, everything uh, about AI will be regulated in in, in some. 